I'm Bishop David Malloy of Rockford. Welcome to this, our meditation for Wednesday of the second week in Ordinary Time. Soy Obispo David Malloy de la Diócesis de Rockford. Y gracias por su participación en esta meditación para el miércoles de la segunda semana del Tiempo Ordinario. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Creator, we give you thanks, who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we, whom you've made stewards of creation, may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, do not say I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Oracle of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading today from the book of the prophet Jeremiah speaks to us of God's love and his creating will that touches upon each one of us, upon every human person. In a particular way, that reading describes God's love and his closeness to us when we are still growing in our mother's womb. And in fact, because God is greater than we are, and he's not bound by time, God did not even have to wait for our conception in order for him to know us and to love us. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And then God seals the deal, as Jeremiah goes on to say, Before you were born, I dedicated you. I gave to each one of us, to each one of you, to each and every human person, a place, a task, a role, my plan for the world. These words are, of course, important at all times, but they're especially important for us this week. On Saturday of this week, the 23rd of January, we pass a sad anniversary. 47 years ago, the Supreme Court in our country legalized abortion in the United States, and we haven't been the same since. Since that decision, over 60 million babies have not had the chance to be born. They might have been friends, schoolmates, people that we would have worked with, neighbors, maybe even our very own relatives, but now they simply don't exist. How often we're told in our time to trust science, follow the science, be sure that you do that. Well, the science here is very clear. We know, for example, that every child that is ever conceived has a different and unique genetic makeup separate from its father and mother. It's already a separate and a new human person. Medical science constantly proves to us the possibility of viability of the child if for some reason it had to be removed from the mother's womb earlier and earlier that child can be given and can find a way to hold on to, with medical help, the gift of life. And then, of course, there are those fantastic sonograms. We even have those pre-birth parties now, because with a sonogram, we can even see the facial features of the child who is to be born. Abortion flies in the face of all of this science. It flies in the face of what we know by reason. It flies in the face of what our hearts tell us and what faith assures us of. Pope St. John Paul reminded us of the various different circumstances, sometimes of women who are left to abortion because they felt abandoned, because they dealt with great shame, because they were left in fear. In short, because they were not supported by society and often by the men who had used them. But overall, we have abortion in this country 
because we are increasingly res losing our respect for the gift of life. Life in general, human life, life in others. And sometimes we even lose respect for the gift of human life in ourselves. And all of this is tearing us apart. Jeremiah in that reading doesn't speak of God's criticism. He speaks of God's love for us. The love that he has for every child that in his will has been conceived and created. And we are to join our love to God's love. We are joined to join sometimes even our sacrifice for those who have been conceived to the sacrifice of Christ who came and gave himself for each and every one of us because he looked upon us with love and he saw the image and the likeness of his Father in each one of us. There is another reason as well for reflecting on the gift of life and the horror of abortion. This week, we have a new administration that is coming in, and President Biden ran on a platform in which he promised to make, as he said, abortion the law of the land. There's plenty of talk of using presidential executive orders and the formulation of other laws that would expand abortion and that would make each of us become involved in it by the use of our own tax dollars to pay for the destruction of that human life. We need to respond to this. We need especially to pray, to lobby and to contact our legislators and let them know. We need to form consciences, those of others, perhaps even our own consciences. The fact is it comes down to this. When we think about abortion, we have to realize and recognize we're better than this. We have to realize and recognize women deserve better than being left to abortion. All of us bear the image and the likeness of God. And that's true as well for those who are not yet born. Let's finish with a prayer. O God, who adorned creation with splendor and beauty and fashioned human lives in your image and likeness, awaken in every heart reverence for the work of your hands and renew among your people a readiness to nurture and sustain your precious gift of human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in joy to serve the Lord and to respect his gift of life. Thanks be to God.